All right, guys. Thank you for joining. We are going to go over everything you guys need to know about getting business lines of credit. All right. I do a lot of these trainings because I have 15 years of experience uh, helping entrepreneurs grow, whether it's SBA loans, lines of credit, equipment financing. Uh, we do all of that. And I want to help you guys, one, understand what you need to do to get a line of credit. And more importantly, if you have it, how to use it. It's one of the programs I've seen used uh, very incorrectly. And if you use it the wrong way, it can actually be All right, I'm going to ask you guys to mute out. This way, everybody can hear, and then I'll, I'll have some Q&A for everybody at the end. All right, so <clears throat> let's get into it. There's really, I want to go over the types of lines of credit that you guys can get. One is your typical interest-only line of credit. We will get into that, but it's really going to be either you're getting an interest-only line of credit or a line of credit that the payments have principal and interest. All right. Those lines of credit that have principal and interest um, are, in my opinion, a little bit more preferred, and we'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, next, lines of credit. They're either going to have weekly repayments or monthly repayments, and typically they're going to be anywhere from six to 36 months in length. All right. Depending on how long you go out will is really optional, right? A 24-month line of credit is going to have a lower payment. The, the interest rate, the cost of the capital is probably going to be a little bit higher. Okay. But you'll qualify for more, the payments lower. And really, when it comes to lines of credit, if you're using it properly, the rate isn't as much of a difference as you would think, because the idea is you want to use it, pay it off, use it, pay it off. <laughs> Guys, mute out, please. Um, I just don't want to have any interference while, while we're going through this. All right. Now, interest only line of credit. Basically, the way this works, and, and I have one of these, I've had another one uh, with a different company I owned is you're just making interest only payments on it. So if you have a $100,000 line of credit and pull the full thing, you're paying whatever that is. It's usually, let's say prime plus four. So right now my line of credit sitting somewhere between 11 and 12% from Chase. I don't use it um, because I, I'm not a big fan of interest only lines of credit. And I'll get to that why. I'll tell you guys a little bit of a, a story. I had a, a gym franchise I invested in. Turned out to be a total failure. And we had a half a million dollar line of credit. Well, that line of credit, we didn't. I didn't know. I wasn't aware. We had a, multiple partners that it was an interest only line of credit. So after making all those payments uh, for 18 months, when we went to close down the company, knowing that we still had a, a line of credit with a balance of 400,000 is pretty devastating, all right? And now the next reason, typically, if you have a line of credit that's interest only, they make you have a cleanup period sometimes, meaning you gotta pay it down so the balance is zero, all right? Otherwise, you may get a balloon payment at the end, and that balloon payment could be very, very large, and then you're either gonna have to go to the bank and you're at their mercy for them to refinance it, or you have to get some other type of lending option to clean that up. Uh, typically, an SBA is, is usually what, what I would suggest to go in and, and clean up that line of credit. Um, I will take all questions, guys, at the end. Uh, I'm going to go through all of them, give you guys plenty of time to go and, and do a Q&A session. But please feel free, if there's any questions, as you're thinking of them, type them in the chat box because I prom uh, I promise you, everybody has the, the same questions. All right. Now, typical terms, it's going to be interest only payments. It's always the, these lines of credit are always structured as a monthly repayment. That is always going to depend on two things: what's the balance outstanding, what's the interest rate. Okay. If you see here. Anytime you have one of these, it's always going to be prime plus, meaning the bank is borrowing their money at prime or a little under prime, and they're charging you prime plus 
All right. The balloon payment at the end is why I really, really despise these. Um, <clears throat> but it's not the end of the world. If you're using it properly, if you're using it to short term needs, use it, pay it off, use it, pay it off. You don't really have to worry about the balloon payment at the end. The problem is out of all the clients I've helped over 15 years, most of the clients that come to me with this never use a line of credit properly. And so they have a massive balloon payment at the end. And there's always some type of panic to get that paid off. All right. Every line of credit I've ever seen has a draw fee. All right. It's usually anywhere between one and 4%. All that means is if you have a, you know, a $500,000 line of credit, you draw a hundred thousand, they're probably going to take one to 4% of that draw, and that's their quote unquote draw fee. All right, principal and interest. I personally prefer these much more, okay? Especially because you don't have to worry, you have peace of mind because you don't have that balloon payment, all right? And they're both gonna work the same. This payment's gonna be a little higher, either the monthly or the weekly payment's gonna be a little bit higher, but you're not gonna have that cleanup period and you're ultimately not going to have to deal with the balloon payment, all right? These are always going to be anywhere from 6 to 36 months. I have not seen a uh, principal and interest line of credit done longer than 36 months, okay? And it's typically weekly or monthly payments with either simple interest or monthly interest. Right now, what, what I see is a simple interest rate usually starting around 8% and goes up from there. Okay, but most lines of credit this day, you know, are going to be lower to mid teens. The reason I can I can say that is it's based on where interest rates are nationwide. So that prime plus. All right, here's some of the biggest benefits of a principal and interest line of credit. It's access to cash whenever you need it. It's going to build your business credit. All right, it's flexible. So. You choose how much you want to draw and when you want to pay it back in, in full, all right? These only take 24 to 72 hours to set up, especially, especially if you have a very clean application. What I mean by a clean application is credit. You check the credit box. You check the time of business box. You check the revenue and the cash flow requirements. Those lines of credit are very, very easy to get set up. Does not take long at all. And my opinion is these are easier and more friendly to, to the entrepreneur to use. If you, if you own a business, the last thing you want to worry about is fine print on something you didn't see, and that can impact you, your team, and your company that you've spent you know, every waking hour since it started building. All right. This is the biggest thing. If you guys get one takeaway from this. Okay, just one takeaway is how to use a line of credit. All right. And what I want to go over here is you want to match the frequency or the use of what you're using the money for with the term. All right. So I'll give you guys a quick example. You guys would never try to get a mortgage that's a, a year or two years or three years or five years. Why? Because you're going to live in that house hopefully for 15 or 30 years. That's why all mortgages are either get a 15 year or 30 year, the vast majority of it. You wanna pay for it over the lifetime of what you're using, all right? Equipment, anytime we do, anytime we do equipment financing, it's always over three to five years. Why? Because that piece of equipment should last you at least three years. Usually it's gonna be five years plus. All right, the last thing you want to do is pay for a piece of equipment in a year when you could have had more cash flow and lower payments and paid for it over, let's say, three to five years. All right. On the flip side of that, you don't want to have any type of financing for something that's going to exceed that term. You would never want to do, you know, finance a piece of equipment for 15 years. Why? Because the likelihood of that equipment actually being useful to you and your business and valuable after that, call it fifth or seventh year, is zero, all right? So then what you create a situation where the asset really is no longer valuable or you're not using it, but you have a payment on it, 
All right, it is very, very important that you do that. You, you know, you get any type of financing structured properly. All right, lines of credit are short term, six to 36 months. That's a pretty short window. All right, and it's done that way intentionally. It's done that way because things that you are going to buy daily in your business, weekly or monthly in your business, that's what you want to use a line of credit for. And essentially, you just want to use that line of credit for float or for that opportunity. And then as soon as you can, you want to pay it back and then reborrow if the need arises. Does this make sense to everybody? Just raise your hand if it does. If it doesn't, drop a question in there and I promise I will take care of those uh, at the end. All right, but let's talk about how to use a line of credit. Thank you, Jason. How to use a line of credit. If you want to keep the cost down, the sooner you pay back your line of credit, the better, right? That's the biggest advantage is you really control the cost. Whether that rate is 10%, or 20%, it does matter, but it doesn't matter as much if you're using it properly. Meaning, hey, I bought this, I bought inventory on this line of credit, or I bought materials for a job on this line of credit, use them. As soon as you get paid from that job, or as soon as you sell that inventory, pay down the line of credit, right? And then reinvest the profit of that job or that sale into more inventory or into more materials, all right? But lines of credit, the real reasons you want to use them, there's three reasons, right? You need it for emergencies, you need it for opportunities, and you need it for short-term needs, things that you use every day in the business, supplies, inventory, adding to your team, right? Marketing. Those are things that you do every single day that having that float would be very beneficial. The, the other piece to this is if you guys really want to get crazy, you could theoretically put all of those items, those everyday items on a credit card, right? That You know that bill is coming due in 30 days. If you pay that bill on time on that 30th day in full, all you did was rack up the points and there's really no cost to it. So if you were to put everything on a short-term card and then pay that card off with a line of credit. Now you're getting points, you're building your business credit and you're separating your business and your personal credit, all right? The other reason why I see a lot of entrepreneurs struggling is because they're using a lot of their personal credit to finance the business, all right? I have more clients than I can count that have you know, scores in the, let's say, lower 600s, but their payment history is perfect. And the reason that happens, and if you're one of them, that's okay. No one probably ever showed you this or taught you this. But the reason that that's happening is because you're running up your personal credit cards or you don't have a line of credit for the business and you're putting everything on your personal charges, which then get reported to your personal credit. All right. So if you're trying to buy a house or a long, you know, anything like that, that's going to impact your debt to income ratio. So if you can set your business up properly where you have business credit cards and then you have a business line of credit, that stuff's never going to hit your credit report. Your credit's always going to be cleaner. Okay. And now you're starting to build your business credit. All right. Here's some things to avoid. Do not keep large balances on a line of credit. Okay. You're going to run up the cost. And I can tell you, Somebody that has a 20%, let's say, a uh, simple interest line of credit that uses it properly versus somebody that has a 8% line of credit that runs that large balance and keeps it for the 36 months. The person that kept that balance is going to wind up paying exponentially more than the person that is actually using the line of credit properly. That's why I'm saying the rate is not as important as everybody thinks it is. All right. So... Avoid keeping large balances. Avoid any type of line of credit that has a balloon payment if you know sometimes your cash flow cycles are up and down, all right? Because the worst thing you could do is run up a line of credit in a good cycle, think it's going to continue, and then you have a down cycle, and it's very hard to pay that off, okay? And I will say this, the best time to apply for a line of credit, guys, is when you don't need it. All right, I'm going to say that again. The best time to apply for a line of credit is when you don't need it. Here's why. When you don't actually need the line of credit, 
when you run your application or we run your application through the system, your credit's going to be higher, your cash flow is going to be better, and you're going to score out way higher. So you're going to get much better terms. All right. I saw a lot of people here that are in the trades or, you know, they're blue collar uh, service based businesses. If you are, if you have any type of seasonality to your business, the absolute best time to apply for that line of credit is when you're about, a, when you're at the peak of your season or you're basically, I would say, ready to go into your slow season. All right. Because at that time, you have the most revenue, the most cash flow, you put, your credit's probably the highest. That's when you want to make that move and apply for the line of credit. All right. Now, other things to avoid. You not knowing or understanding or planning for cleanup terms, right? It all goes into that balloon payment. If you don't know when that cleanup is, right? Some it's a year, some it's two years, some it's three years. If you don't know when it is, you can't plan for it. And you, that's the last thing you want is that an unexpected large bill to hit your business. All right. Here's another best practice or tip when you have a line of credit. You need to, every three to six months, ask for an increase. All right. It's very simple. The more credit you have access to, especially now when we're in a recession, the better. So every three to six months, ask for an increase. There's nothing wrong with doing that. The worst they can say is no. If you don't ask, the answer is definitely no. So make sure that you're constantly pushing to get that. Now, here's the one thing I will say. It's kind of like when you were uh, 18 years old and you had your first credit card, all right? When you get that first line of credit, if you're not using at least 50% of it, it's going to be very hard for you to ask for that increase because they're going to say, hey, you've never even used half of this thing. Why are we going to give you an increase? So make sure if you're using the line of credit properly, you're using it, paying it off, every three to six months, go and request an increase. All right. Here's, here's the other thing. Do not use a line of credit for long-term items. Okay. Equipment, debt consolidation, anything like that. If you're going to buy equipment, if it's under 10000 you might want to consider you might consider it, but for the most part, equipment use equipment financing. Debt consolidation you either use an SBA loan or a term loan. Do not wrap up your line of credit with long term uses, okay? Long term needs it will crush your business, and you'll wind up paying exponentially more because you're not using the, the program right. All right, where to get a line of credit? You can go to a bank. You go to a broker, go to a marketplace, and go to fintech companies. All right, I'm, I'm going to break each one down. Go into a bank. You can go to a bank like Chase. They're going, you know, they're going to. If you don't fit their box, there's nothing they can do for you. In fact, I have a relationship with Chase uh, with their private banking uh, head. You know, their their head of private banking out of Orlando, and he sends me a ton of clients that they can't help. I also send them a ton of clients that I think are a good fit for them. All right. A broker. Here's the problem with most brokers, right? A bank truly isn't that incentivized. The guy that's taking your application, he might make 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 a year. Okay. Whether that line of credit closes or not is not really going to impact the, you know, his lifestyle. All right. Whereas a broker or a marketplace they're not getting paid unless they actually deliver that line of credit. Okay. The one thing I would say about going and working with a broker is a lot of brokers actually do not have lines of credit. They will just pitch you a cash advance and that is nothing like line of credit. All right. I have a marketplace firm. All that means is we have every program on the one roof. We do all of our internal underwriting and then, we call up underwriters that are in our network and say, hey, this is what we have. This is what our client's looking for. Make it happen. All right. And then fintech companies. There's a bunch of fintech companies online that uh, you can go to that'll do this. But it's kind of similar to going to a bank, right? They're not, their guys are not professional. They don't always know that a line of credit is the right fit. And guys, every business needs a line of credit, but sometimes a line of credit isn't the right fit. I'm going to tell you guys one example when a line of credit isn't the right fit. 
This way you guys can avoid a really major mistake. If you have terms of let's say net 15, net 30, net 60, and you are a B2B company, meaning business to business, I'll give you a great one. Manufacturing is, is that. Uh, vinyl and graphics, you know, the guys that go in and um, basically put the decals up and the advertisements up on the walls or the windows of a CVS. Those companies are basically B2B companies. And after they do their work, then they invoice to wait and, and they wait usually 15 to 30 days to get paid. A line of credit isn't going to solve that problem. That is a great, great fit for invoice factory. Okay. If you were to try to solve that problem with a line of credit, what's going to wind up happening is it's going to work in the short term. And as you continue to grow, all right, you're basically going to cap out or tap, you know, use 100% of that line of credit. And then you're going to have a payment in addition to having the cash flow problems. That's why I would say if you're B2B, you're invoicing on net 15, net 30 terms, before you even consider getting a line of credit, you speak to us or somebody else in the space that does. It doesn't have to be to us, but somebody else in the space that is going to set you up with invoice factoring and then get you a line of credit. Because that line of credit, probably by month six or, or month 12, is actually going to be more of a burden because it's not solving the underlying issue of you laying out money or money for materials, for labor, for everything, and then waiting 30 days to get paid. All right. I hope that part made sense. Now, what are some of the basic qualifications of a line of credit? This is not a, I wouldn't say this is a hard and fast rule, right? Every bank, every fintech company, everybody has slight variations of this, right? But for the most part, they want to see your personal credit above 650. They want to see that you've been in business at least two years. They want to see great cash flow. Now, cash flow has a lot of different, there's a lot of metrics to cash flow, right? One metric is how many deposits do you have a month? The more deposits, the safer you are to lend to because it shows that you have more clients. The fewer deposits you have, the riskier you are to lend to, because if you lose a client, you may lose 20% of your business overnight. All right. Um, <clears throat> another, another component of cash flow is consistency, right? Are you a company that does 400,000 every month, or do you have a month that you do 600,000 and then you come back down to 100,000, right? The more consistent you are, or if revenue is increasing, let's say you're increasing 5% a month, that shows stability and that is an easier business to get approved and easier business to lend to. As long as the revenue isn't all the way up and all the way down without an explanation or the revenues decline, that is indication of a stronger business and strong cash flow. All right, they wanna see most of the underwriters that I work with now, to get a line of credit, to get a really good line of credit, they want you to be doing at least $50,000 a month. And a lot of times they want to see strong average daily balances. The rule of thumb I give everybody, and this will help you with any financial product. It'll help you with an SBA loan. It'll really help you with a line of credit, with equipment financing, is you want to keep 10% of your monthly sales average in the bank at all times with no negative days, okay? So avoid negative days at all costs. However, if you can keep 10%, so if you, you're doing $500,000 uh, a month, if you can keep 50,000 in the bank at all times, you're gonna have a much easier time getting equipment financing and getting a line of credit. All right. Most lines of credit, believe it or not, this is all you need to apply, okay? One page application, the last six months of your business bank statements. If you accept credit cards, sometimes they wanna take a look at that. That's the reason why I put that on there. Uh, the reason they're looking for that, they wanna see if you have any other financing. Sometimes it can be in your merchant processing statements. Then you're gonna need a driver's license, a voided check. If you're going for a larger line of credit through Chase, I would expect 
that they will probably ask you, they didn't ask me, but they, I've been with them for 20 plus years. Um, I would expect that they're going to ask for two years of tax returns and year to date financials. All right. But for the most part, especially with the lines of credit we work with, this is enough to get it done in 24 to 48 hours. All right. Again, I jumped ahead a little bit, but how long does it take? Usually it'll take 24 to 48 hours if everything's clean. If it's not clean, it might take, you know, 72 hours. But for the most part, that's what you can expect in terms of a, a turnaround time. All right. And again, the absolute best time for anyone to apply for a line of credit is when you don't need it. You will actually score out way higher in, in their models and you'll get much better terms. All right, let's go into some of the best practices. For your lines of credit, and I know some of this is redundant, but it is so important because if you do not use them properly, and really any financing program, if you don't use any financing properly, you're going to put your company at risk and yourself in jeopardy. Only use a line of credit for opportunities, emergencies, or short-term needs. We went over all the short-term needs, all right? And then always try to use it, pay it off. Don't carry large balances. Keep that cost down. Always ask for an increase every six months. I have clients that ask for an increase every three months, and they have, for the most part, I would probably say it's a 50-50 if they get it. But most of them do wind up increasing it. And I've seen people go and have a, start with a line of credit of, let's say, 70000 and now their lines of credit are, are at uh, 250000 All right. Um, never go negative in your bank. So when you have a line of credit, a lot of the company, a lot of the providers have you link your bank. All right. So if, if you you go negative, you have any issues or you take additional financing that violates that they'll actually suspend you or, or shut that off. All right. So it's important to make sure that you maintain great cash flow when you have a line of credit. And if you have a CFO on hand, and they can go out and forecast, hey, you know, and last week in December, we might have a little bit of an issue here. Well, you want to get ahead of that issue and draw on the line of credit so you don't have uh, a potential, you know, suspension or shutdown. All right. And especially in these times, the more credit you can get access to, the better it's going to be. All right. Because right now what you're seeing, especially if you're in roofing or solar, a lot of liquidity is leaving the markets, right? Banks are not nearly as uh, aggressive lending because of what's going on nationwide. All right, guys, let me stop you there. You guys unmute and ask any questions. You know, raise your hand, ask any questions. If you guys want to come on, that would be even better, meaning show your face. And I'm going to go through some of these uh, chats. All right, Nick, uh, on mute. What's going on, bud? Not much, bro. I don't even know if you can see me, man. My, I zoom, on my phone, zoom, zoom on my phone is kind of ridiculous, Jonathan. Um, oh, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, man. But I appreciate you taking the time to do this, man. This is awesome. Um, me and you spoke before in uh, – in the in Kevin's elite board, yeah. Um, I am. I'd mentioned this to you before, but I know you're speaking to a big group, and it wasn't really tailored to this. So, I, I own an insurance company. I've been in business for since 2021. Filed 2021 taxes, 2022 taxes. Um, and I am looking for working capital to start hiring more employees mm -hmm. because with insurance business, there's a little bit of lag from the time. Hey, I hire somebody. You got to write two or three months, right? So you can. You get you pay your 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 payments are kind of lagged. I guess you could say. So let me ask so you what, this before, is this, what what is the typical lag that you see? Because that matters more than anything else you're going to say. Okay, three months. So your average guy that you would consider strong and you want to keep on the team is going to be a, a three month lag. Oh uh, yeah. So we hire somebody from day one from the time they go training, which is going to take a month, and by the time they start writing business. You gotta get paid from the insurance companies. Th that's where the lags at. Even though they might write ten thousand dollars a commission, they don't, they don't get paid on it for like 30, 40 days. 
Okay. So what, how much do you think you have to lay out per employee for that three to four months? Uh, I would say the way I would structure this pay plan is obviously going to be salary and we're going to wean mm -hmm. them down until commissions start hitting. Yeah. Um, I would say the industry is about 4,000 a month. Just okay, for a so, salary. Well, so for every single person you want to hire, mm -hmm. you know, at best case, it's going to, it's going to cost you 12,000 over three months, right? Right. Okay. And how many people do you want to hire? Uh, one at a time. Just really one at a time. Uh, in 2024, three. That'd be the goal. Yep. Okay. Do you want my real suggestion? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, let's talk about the SBA bolt. We can still do a lot of credit after, but for what you're trying to do, and if you want explosive growth, I would actually suggest going and do it, get pulling a hundred and fifty thousand from the SBA over ten years. No. And the reason I would suggest that is it's going to be a much lower payment than a line of credit. And we can still set up the line of credit, but if you're going to hire three people, you're looking at 36,000. And that's if you nail every single one of them. I run a sales organization too, obviously. And you don't always hit every yep. single one. Of them. Yep. My suggestion, SBA Bolt, and, and, and then a line of credit. Go. Okay. okay. And I can help you with, with, with either one. You know that. Well, yeah, easy enough. That's a lot better than everybody I've talked to is like just local banks where I bank at here. You know, I just go get a home equity line. I'm like, but, but, but it got my mind spinning. I, was like, I don't really want it tied together. I, no, I just don't. No. You shouldn't. You absolutely shouldn't. I would tell anyone that. I would never, ever, ever borrow from my home to fund a business and, and tie that up. Businesses are ex ex really risky. Like everyone knows that. That's why businesses are more expensive to lend to than consumers. However, right. I don't want to tie up my family's, most people, their home is their biggest asset. Okay. I don't want to tie up my family's biggest asset for this, for the business. I want to keep my personal and business as separate as possible. That's right. why I would tell you go. The hundred and fifty thousand dollar bulk from the SBA, it's there's obviously personal guarantee, but there's really no collateral. They're not coming after your house if something were to happen. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Cool. Awesome. Appreciate it. You're welcome, bud. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate sure. it. Uh, who else has questions, guys? Let's let's get after it. Jason, Joe, anybody? No, I'm pretty good on my end. I mean, this was, you know, we don't do any finance in our, any uh, lines of credit, but I definitely use um, personal money, and I see personal money. I see where that kind of gets you in trouble. So I'm just absorbing up here at this noodle. I'll definitely hit you up. Okay, yeah. Guys, if I can help you in any way, please let me know. And, I, I mean, I have a program out called Capital Tools, and it's it's – Basically goes over every program under the sun, plus building business credit, how to use them. If you guys want to check it out, that'd be great. Um, if not, no big deal. If you guys need anything or you guys think of a question after, please feel free to just, you know, message me or, or, or reach out. I'm happy to help you guys. All right. Thank you all for taking a little bit of time and uh, spending with us here learning. And uh, look out because I'll be doing a couple more of these for equipment financing, for SBA, you name it. So I appreciate all of you guys. And um, yeah, there we go. All right. I got that, Jason. Awesome. Thank you. Well, you guys have a great night. And uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm easy to reach. Take care. Thank you.